In 1956, the jury at the Cannes Festival sat down to watch this film. It was made in Bengal, and it was completely unlike any other Indian cinema they had seen. None of the jurors had ever heard of its director. He was a 35-year-old graphic designer in an advertising agency in Calcutta. Astonishingly, this was his very first film. The jury awarded the prize for best human document to Pother Panchali. Since then, the director has won international acclaim but in most of India, his films are virtually unknown. My influence has been rather limited, you see, because uh, of my language, of the Bengali language, you see. You can see, uh, you can show my films only in West Bengal and some of the big cities like Madras, Delhi and Bombay with English subtitles. So the influence has not been very wide. Actually, I'm more a name than a... Uh, I'm not known by my films at all. I think lots of... Uh, mm. Now, thanks to the Film Society movement, my films are getting to be known mm. in our other provinces as well. But formerly, for a long time, I was just a name outside of West Bengal. At what point did you start to really become more interested in film than in advertising? Well, I... Uh, Actually, I started as a film fan. I was uh, subscribing to magazines like Picture Gore and Photoplay and Film Pictorial, and uh, I was more interested in the stars and uh, reading about them, the uh, doings and all that. And, but there came a point around the early 40s, I think, uh, that I got interested in directors and the particular kind of stamp that they left on their work. The coffee houses of Calcutta are where young film enthusiasts met in the 1940s to talk about movies. They formed the Calcutta Film Society, borrowing prints of European films from embassies in the city and screening them on borrowed projectors in their own flats. They despised the Indian cinema of the time and they talked about how they might make films of their own. I was sent to England in 1950 by my agency to work at the head office in London. And it was then that I saw the first new realist films and a whole lot of Italian films and other films as well. I saw about a hundred films in six months. And it was the new realists which convinced me that you could work with non-professionals, you could work entirely on location, you didn't have to worry about surface quality so much as uh, the, the human content. And that was what eventually Pothet uh, aimed at, uh, doing that kind of a film. Pothet Panchali is a classic Bengali novel. Ever since he first read it, Ray had wanted to make it into a film. When he got back from London, he fired a group of friends with the idea, and they set out to find a location in a village outside Calcutta. Ray put his own savings into it, and they managed to shoot a third of the film before production ground to a halt. Producer after producer turned Ray down, but by a lucky chance, the footage he had shot was seen by the chief minister of Bengal. The title, Patha Panchali, means the song of the little road, Ray was able to resume filming with a grant from the Government Road Improvement Department. More than a year after they had abandoned the filming, the entire unit reassembled here in the village location, a house Ray had rented through a friend for 50 rupees a month. He had now paid it for two years. 
Over the next six months, they completed the shooting. Like Ray himself, none of the team had ever made a film before. Patapanchali was to become the archetypal picture of life in an Indian village. The film tells the story of three generations of a poor Brahmin family. It's the first of a trilogy which follows the fortunes of the family's young son, Opu. Opu? 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 When we shot the beginning, we were all amateurs learning our craft. And some of it shows in the, in the, in the cutting, in, in, the, in, the, in the timing, in the rhythm of the film, in, even in the photography to a certain extent. But from about halfway onwards to the end, by that time, with, what, with all the long gaps in between, we learnt a lot. We looked at the footage again and again, and we learnt our, by our mistakes. And uh, in the end, of course, the second half is very fluent and uh, effective, I think. But I, we were able to achieve more as what we wanted. I see what you mean, but I'm surprised that you, you're dissatisfied with the first half as you are. Well, I am. I am dissatisfied with the first half, and there are lots of things which should have been different. But, you see, for an outsider, for someone who doesn't know, uh, I think uh, the, the, the landscape, the, the characters are so interesting, and uh, the visual quality of the film, I think uh, people don't notice the mistake so much as, as I do. Although she has a minor role, the real star of Pathapanchali is the old aunt, India, played by Chunibala Devi. She was also one of the few professionals Ray used in the film. We looked for old women in villages and things, but uh, I felt that they wouldn't be able to memorize their lines, you see. They were sort of senile. Very old women were... I, don't, I didn't have the confidence working uh, with such people. Mm. So I went to Chunibala Devi, and uh, she turned out to be in full possession of her senses and uh, said she would be very happy working after 30 years of no work. She'd been completely forgotten by the industry. She was 80 when we started and 82 when we finished. <laughs> 
And every winter we held our breaths and uh, worried about her and falling ill or something like that. Death is such an important thing. Uh, a character whom you know suddenly dying is so crucial to a film that one has to use one's imagination to do it in a special sort of way.